Hello everyone, my name is Brandon Holt. The theme of this demonstration focuses on 3D Slicer and how you can create 2D images and 3D volume renderings to be used within your presentations. The two modules that I will be focusing on are the volume rendering module and the crop volume module. So let us begin by loading our DICOM dataset that we have provided for this demonstration. Go to the top left of the toolbar you can see a DCM icon. If you click on that, a DICOM browser window will pop up. And the first thing you need to do is click Import. Locate your data set. This one is called Carcinomics. Click Import. It says that the directory import has been completed. And now we, just, we should click on our patient and click Load. So the first thing that appears on the right hand side of the screen are our three images and they look like CT data and the top one in the red window is the axial view, the middle one in the yellow window is the sagittal view, and the bottom one in the green window is the coronal view. You can actually adjust the way these images are displayed by uh, clicking with the left mouse button and this will adjust the levels, um, which in turn affect the different intensities of the whites and the darks and the middle tones. Now I like to aim for a lot of variation within the midtones so that I can see all the different soft tissue within this person's anatomy. Very good. Once you have um, the values that you like best, I encourage you to go ahead and use the sliders at the top of the windows to go and explore the anatomy of this patient and see if anything um, abnormal pops up. The first thing I see on this patient's left lung is this large mass. So now I want to go ahead and visualize that in all of the other slices and if you click shift and left mouse button click, all the other slices will line up to where you clicked on this slice. So now you can see the large mass within the sagittal view and the coronal view. And that's obviously not something that's naturally found within the human body. So now we have our 2D views that are visualizing this person's anatomy, but I, I would like to go ahead and get a little closer. So if you middle mouse button and click, you will pan um, on the 2D view. And if you right mouse button and click, you can zoom in. So let's go ahead and get really close. Still leave some anatomy for orientation. Great. So now that I'm happy with the way those 2D views look, I can go and save um, screenshots of these views. I go over to the top toolbar again and click on the screen capture icon. I would like to save the red, yellow, and the green. So we'll do one at a time and we'll start with the axial view and we'll say along mass, axial, and we'll click OK. We'll click this again, we'll go to the yellow slice, this is our sagittal view, we'll say it's a long mass sagittal, OK. We do one more screen capture. Go to the green slice view and name this one Lung Mass Coronal. And all those images are saved with the document and I'll show you where to retrieve those later. So now that we have visualized this person's lung mass within the 2D views, it's now time to switch over to our volume rendering module. 
And if you go to the top toolbar menu again, we have this drop down menu that lets you um, view all the modules that come with 3D Slicer. But we have a lot of our core modules already off to the side. And let's go over to our volume rendering module here. As you can see, nothing has appeared within our 3D window. So if we would like something to appear, we have to um, load it into our volume panel. The arterials volume is the one that came with our carcinomics uh, data set. If we want to see it within our 3D window, we need to turn on this eyeball. And if we would like to frame this uh, 3D model within the window, we need to click this button right here at the top of our 3D view. In order to navigate around the 3D scene, we can left mouse button click and orbit. We can use the middle mouse button to pan, and the right mouse button will allow us to zoom in and out. So a combination of the two will get it to where you'd like. So if you notice, we can't really visualize the lungs when we have all this other tissue in the way. So if we go over to our display panel, we can select a preset that better helps us visualize that tissue. There are various um, presets here, anywhere from um, cardiac to brain. But if you notice, there's a blue lung thumbnail here. Uh, that one is going to help us visualize any of the air-filled cavities. So there's a lot of static in the way because of, of the CT data. We notice that there's a lot of um, air outside of the person that's being captured within this data set. But if we rotate around, we can see the lungs. And we can also see, which looks like a lot of scar tissue here, um, which is where that cancerous mass is located. So the next thing we need to do is use a region of interest or an ROI to crop in on the lungs so we can better visualize them. The first thing we need to do is enable crop within our display panel. We need to display our ROI. So if you notice, there's a little white box that appears in our 2D view and our 3D viewer. Since we've already saved out our 2D views, I'm not worried about adjusting things. So I can zoom in and out of these views to better visualize the lungs and the ROI box. And what you want to do is move these um, ROI dots to help you crop in on your volume render. So I'd like to use all three views to help me visualize this lung better. Oh, I notice there's a little bit of cropping going on. Anterior portion. So it's great to make your adjustments in the 2D views and um, keep an eye on the 3D view to see how it's affecting it. There, I say I'm pretty happy with that, but I know that our mass is located more posteriorly within the lung, so I'm not afraid to go in and crop in on that so I can better visualize it. So there we have our volume rendering of the lung, and what you can do in our display panel is actually slide our the shift um, adjustment to the left and right to help you better see various structures and tissue densities. So 
I'm not really liking the way this one's looking. So I'm just going to go ahead and scroll through these presets to figure out which ones I like better and which ones will show that mass better. There we go. And feel free to use a variety of these presets to help you visualize and um, tell your story. So there, I like the way this one is looking. Um, I can see the mass within the chest cavity and its relationship to the heart. So I want to go ahead and save out a 3D view. Long mass volume render and click OK. Now that I have the volume render I would like and I have my 2D views, um, we can go ahead and save out our file by clicking the Save button in the top left corner of our menu bar. So we have all of our files here and I want to choose where I would like to save it. Go to my desktop and I want to create a new folder and call it lung mass and choose that and click save. Now let's say that your computer is having a hard time processing all this information and you really wish you could get rid of some of the data that you're not focusing on. Well that's when we can move on to the crop volume module. We we'll go into our module drop down menu again over here on the top of our uh, toolbar and we go over to crop volume. So right now what we have in our 3D window is the volume rendering of the entire data set. But what we can do is crop it down to just a small portion of the data set. So in the input volume panel, we want to say that we are going to use the input volume arterials, and we want to create a new volume with that. So we already have the ROI cropped in position where we'd like it. So then all we need to do is click apply. Now the computer's going to think a little bit, but now it is ready. So if we go back to our volume rendering module, we'll see that we have a new um, volume, and that is the arterials cropped. But before we can appreciate that, we need to turn this one off, go into arterials cropped, and we can turn that one back on. And we notice that the preset has been lost, but we um, can go back in and find that and apply that. And this is going to make our computer function um, much faster and doesn't have to compute that entire set of DICOM data. All right, thank you for watching. And the next um, session, we'll be taking those images and putting them into PowerPoint.